Okay, got the next reading up, um, so let's jump into it. So <clears throat> up first we've got um, the Rhetorical Act, Chapter 4, which is about evidence. Uh, one moment. Ah. So um, evidence is really important for any um, rhetorical argument or uh, any, any form of rhetoric. Um, so the chapter covers um, how evidence has to be judged on a couple of things. One, logical strength and, and limits, and a psychological power. So just um, how they, what, what kind of strengths and weaknesses it has, and um, how effective it is at um, doing its job. And then there's um, several uh, things that I can add to your um, statistics, or well, your evidence. Um, one of them being statistics. Um, numbers and stuff are very convincing. Um, stories, if people um, were very uh, story-based learners as humans, and so stories can be very powerful in uh, convincing people of things. Um, visuals, we are also visual learners, and so um, having visuals can help uh, to uh, get your point across. Uh, analogies, so if you relate to something that people already know, then they'll be um, quicker to uh, sort of understand your point. And then the final thing is uh, authority. So if you are an authority on this subject, then um, they'll be more likely to believe you, simply because you've already done work in this field. Okay, so up next we've got, um, oh, this is a tough one, Kubi and Kizem, oh man, I'm never gonna pronounce this, Kizemnitinolali? Yeah, I'm not gonna get that right. But uh, they talk about uh, TV addiction. Um, so they talk about sort of as humans, um, sometimes what we want can hurt us, um, and that the focus for that is TV, um, how sometimes we just watch too much TV, even though we know it's not good for us. Um, they talk about some of the reasons for that, and it's that, um, some, that um, a body emotion, or body emotion tends to stay in motion, and a body rest tends to stay at rest. So when we're at rest, i.e. watching television, um, we're bound to just sit and watch more television and not actually go out and do other things. Um, they also touch on sort of psychologically how um, TV and the internet are meant to keep us watching. Um, so they use uh, like, color, like colorful images and fast cuts and just a, a lot of psychological tools to sort of keep us glued to the seat. Um, next is uh, Gay writing on women in media. Um, so she writes first about her own life and how um, it was hard. She was surrounded by drugs and a lot of people in um, pretty desperate situations. Um, and how, because of that, she kind of doesn't relate to the TV show called Girls. Um, that's a show about some pretty privileged women in, uh, living in New York. Um, she writes about how it's not terribly progressive for the time that we live in. Um, seeing as how it's very similar to, it has a lot of similar themes to like um, Friends and a lot of other shows from the 90s, um, like Sex and the City, um, just shows that um, sort of have women in uh, sort of a, a negative light, um, maybe not as progressive as they could be, so it's kind of disappointing to have a modern show be not as pr uh, progressive as it could be. Um, let's see. All right, and the next one is Cantor, uh, writing about the apocalypse. Um, really interesting essay. He talks about how um, the, we dream about the apocalypse because it can set us free from a lot of things. Um, a lot of uh, material and social um, like sort of chains that we have, um, sort of like uh, capitalism, uh, you know, like debt, um, just uh, like society in general, any pressures that might be on us that we don't ex exactly like um, are usually destroyed by the apocalypse. Um, and because of that, because of the destruction of those institutions, we can focus more on what we desire, which is human connection. Um, and also uh, a return to a sort of pure living, or sort of how we were supposed to be, which is kind of like agriculture, absence of technology, um, that, that kind of stuff um, is fantasized a lot about in um, apocalyptic media. And uh, the final essay uh, was from Aletta, writing about Netflix. Um, it says it goes a lot about the history of uh, Netflix, not so much about um, sort of a, a main message. Um, so it goes a lot about into the history of Netflix and Blockbuster, how they tried to make a deal early on, but uh, Blockbuster didn't take up that deal and they ended up failing and Netflix succeeded. Um, Netflix, uh, at the time this essay, was contending with uh, YouTube, but I believe it has surpassed it in terms of viewership um, since then. Um, and currently Netflix finds itself in a lot of uh, competition with uh, services like 
HBO, Hulu, Apple, um, Disney, and uh, a lot of other uh, things like that. So while they have uh, gained a lot of success and changed the way that we view media, um, they aren't just as dominant as they used to be. And yeah, that's it.